ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಫೈನಲಿ ಮೈ ಪ್ರೇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ರಾಮಾಯಣ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ರಾಮ್ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಯು ಆಲ್ ನೋ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟೋಲ್ all our scriptures have many stories many akhyayikas and all of them are meant for giving us a message what we call tatparya nirnay in the shastriya language or we call moral of the story in the look uh, english language when something is told why this is told what is the moral of the story that we have to learn see now when we don't understand the moral of the story we get carried away by the non essentials and become influenced that oh these stories are cock and bull stories see when i was talking on kathopanishad and uh, on the first day first lecture i told them we'll be talking the story of nachiket who goes to lord death and lord death gives him the instructions this is the story in short now after listening the whole upanishad if you will ask me this question how nachiketa has gone to lord death whether with the body or without body whether he died and gone or he has gone alive and if these questions pop up in your mind then you require to study kathopanishad again after studying second time again if this question is retained again you have to study kathopanishad third time till this question disappears see so this moral of the story should be understood the whole ramayana tells us this about this moral of the story i had told one story many i in my talks also i mentioned once there was a fish from the ocean and it has gone to a well and in that well there was a frog and that frog saw that fish and asked hey who are you so the fish said i am a fish oh good where from you are come the frog must be indian because indians have to ask these questions so he said i come from ocean what is the ocean so the fish said ocean is water what else how much water now the frog in that well has never gone out of it so he took his small little hand this much water he cannot think beyond it so the fish has a problem fish doesn't have a neck so he can't move so he wagged his tail and told no again the frog uh, took his both small little hands this much water the fish said no then third time the frog became disgusted took a leap within the well waters this much water you mean he said no then sarcastically out of anger he jumped from wall to wall diagonally do you mean this much water he said no baba then how much come to the sea both of them go to the sea or the ocean now the frog, fish asked the question to the frog tell me how much is the water frog kept his mouth shut this is the story now what is the moral of the story the one who is lost in small little things he can never imagine the infinite so till such time we are bound and caught up 
in small little things we can never imagine what is divinity now this was the purpose the story was told but there was one elderly gentleman sitting right in the front and very sincerely seriously asking a question normally i don't enter in questions during the talk but he was very elderly man very sincere i couldn't say no to him he said samji i want to ask you a question i said okay only one question okay how the fish has gone to the well what can i reply so i told by king fisher airlines now the very moral of the story is not understood exactly the same thing ramayana we have heard so many times but what we have learned see friends the real spiritual practice is learning 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 like we go to university what for for learning in the same manner we have come to this universe for learning and those who are able to learn from their day to day experiences they grow wise with every additional experience those who are not learned from their own experiences of life even god cannot teach them we tell out of formality and reverence for the lord krishnam vande jagat gurum we salute bhagwan krishna who is jagat guru if he is jagat guru why he could not teach duryodhan dushasan dhritarashtra we may call somebody the jagat guru but is he accepted by the world see friends therefore this principle of guru is not a person outside anywhere it is our ability to learn from every little daily experiences it is for this purpose we go to satsang satsang gives us this vision how to learn nothing can be taught you have to learn see one example i'll tell you how learning and teaching this happened in uh, usa probably many years before i was uh, in some uh, place with my friend he his wife and his child hardly 2 3 years of age we went to a swimming pool i know swimming his wife knew swimming and the child 2 3 he also knew swimming we went there and i told my friend hey you come in he said no swami ji i cannot swim i said why your wife is swimming with a small child 3 years he is swimming can't you swim i tried my best i cannot learn see therefore in the transfer of knowledge and wisdom importance is that of the disciple not that of the guru guru will fail if the disciple refuses to learn otherwise there are so many mahatmas in the whole world why people are not going wise because they refuse to learn exactly the same way we all have to learn from the story of ramayana that we have been hearing for ages together see once i was in melbourne and uh, one of a great mahatma you know there his name our um, ramesh bhai oja he is a very good friend of mine so he was there we happened to meet a some garden somewhere so namaskar chamatkar and then he asked samiri i am having ramayana mantra i this yagya please come in the evening i said okay i will ask my boss you ask your boss let us fix them together and we'll decide he said your boss i said yes who so like here um virendra is my boss there there was somebody my boss my life is very simple i am a follower if you want to be happy in life be a follower never be a leader where i have to stay i don't think 
who will wash my clothes i don't think what food i had to take i don't think what room i had to sleep i don't think so I'm happy na now somebody thinks for me i don't think this is the beauty of the devotion devotee don't think jehi vidhi rakhe ram tehi vidhi rahi mauj mein raho that is my principle so when i was there with my friend uh, he said you come so we fix and i went to their talk so when i reached there he has kept a seat for me now when you speak something on ramayan uh and he was talking in gujarati there so i spoke in english i said no ramayan you will learn proper ramayan from maharaj ji i am not a good teacher i can only bluff but what i have learned that i'll tell you now what you have learned from ramayan i don't know but what i have learned is different if your son is direct avatar of bhagwan narayana like rama was his father died because of the son what was the cause of dashrathas death rama is it not when sakshat narayana took avatar as the son of dashratha and the net result is dashratha died because of rama his own son if this is the truth what do you expect from your children this is the message but all the parents are extremely miserable and disgusted because of the children see in san jose i went to somebody's house and lunch time 12:30 or so when i went i said hey uh, where is your son call him for lunch So I mean, you go and wake him up. There is nothing like free dinner in this world, particularly America. So I went there, and he was sleeping on a bed, a big bed, diagonally in a bhojanga. So, twelve thirty in the afternoon. I thought he may be ill. I thought who can sleep that time? So he said, No, so I mean, he is very lazy and good for nothing. I am fed up of him. I knew what is coming up. I said, Okay, let us take food. Immediately change the topic. You join? He said, "No, I will not take food. I will take later." I said, "All right. I come for eating. I am going to eat." So I started. Again, he started his story. Swami ji, back home. This is standard phrase in USA. Back home, when we were children, we used to listen to our parents, and we were afraid of them. When my father used to come to my room, I used to run to the other room out of fear. now it is the condition is other when my son comes in my room i run to the other room swami ji why this is happening i said because you are born to run first because of the father now because of the son run or run so but why this is happening i said i will tell you something but you are not going to discuss further on this topic agree i said we were lucky to have good parents our children are unfortunate they have dumb parents and therefore they don't listen first lesson from ramayana is don't get lost too much in the lives of your children we are here in this world only for one purpose see we must know what for we are where i tell you what is the meaning of the real spirituality i am not going to give you mantra i am not going to tell you chant lord's name i am not going to tell you go around nothing that you are already doing you are all well versed in that in the same thing i tell then what is the purpose of my coming i must leave confusion and then go confusion is like a vaccine it will make you rethink about your life is very important so what for we are here and what is spirituality
this is what you are. Now, what is your experience? I'm just being. You are neither a man nor a woman. Neither in America nor in India. You are just being. To remain in this poise 24-7 and conduct the drama of life is Ramayana. See? Now how to practice this spiritual life? The things I am telling you, they are so simple that I guarantee you, you will never do it. If I tell you something complicated, you will do it. Suppose I tell you, you stand in the Ganges water in the month of January in Haridwar up to the waist level and take a Rudraksha Mala in your hand and chant Gayatri Mantra for 2400,000 times. It will take few months, years. You will do it. I have no doubt about it. But what I am telling you, that you will not do it, because it is so simple. What is that? Listen. We are all here together. What for we are here? I am here to talk to you, to give the message of Ramayana. Correct? What for you are here? To listen. Now I am talking is recorded. But you are listening. Are you listening? Now last 17 minutes I was talking. Out of the 17 minutes, how many minutes you heard me? See, spiritual life is the ability to remain 100% in the place where you are and the time when you are. Okay, time and space won't influence you. You are one with the Divine. Many people ask me this question. Because I am little abnormal in a sense, I don't get jet lag. When I come from India to USA, I came to Washington to Las. And uh, evening we went for a, um, you know, walk and then uh, nice thing, then we had dinner. Next morning again by 4 o'clock I am out. Then whole day we went few jobs to be done. Evening we had a talk and after that, next day morning flight to um, your Miami. There my talks continued. So how come you don't get the jet lag and how come the time Zone doesn't influence you. I said there is a simple technique. This technique you will not do again, I tell you. The technique is, when you come to it, uh, USA, you are still lingering in India. Simple principle, my friends. Time and space, they go together. When you are in USA, insist you are in USA, that's it. But our condition is, you know, now it must have been night there, you know. Now this must be the lunch time. Now that must be the dinner time. And this is how our mind is tortured in time and space. And when you are tortured, how you can be happy? 
just give uh, an uh, try to this experiment. 293 days before, at 11 o'clock in the morning, what did you do? Oh God, 293. Second question. After 187 days, at 5.30, what will you drink? I don't know. See? Be attentive. When you go, you are knowledge. When you go away from the knowledge, it is called as ignorance. And where there is ignorance, there are questions, there are doubts. There is only one thing about which we have no questions, one no doubt. And that is our being. If we ask somebody, do you know Gita chapter 12? I think I will try. But if I ask you a question, uh, are you there? I, 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 don't, I think I am here. No, I know I am. Our problem is, we are never where we are, we are never when we are. So what will be the real spiritual practice according to Ramayana? This. Whatever we are doing, whenever we are doing, and wherever we are doing, we must train ourselves to be 100% present every moment. See? And how we go away? We go away because suppose uh, somebody tells me, See, when, you know, I was in India, I went to Kedarnath and uh, it was okay. But suddenly it started snowing, it became so cold and we were really suffering. Do you think when listening to your story, I'll keep quiet? Immediately I say, no, but when I went there, you know, I was told it is snowing, but when I went, it was a bright sun. Now who asked you? Do you want a good mantra diksha? Guarantee. God realization guaranteed. And that mantra diksha is such that you have to chant it to yourself 24 7. Agreed? Okay. See, listen, don't talk. Dekho, suno. Bolo man. Arjuna's question, Bhagavad Gita. Stita pradnisya kamasha samadhista se keshava, stita dhikim pravasheta, kimasita vrajeta kim. Stita dhikim pravasheta. How the wise man responds in this world? And Bhagavan says, Dukkeshu Anadvigna Manaha and Sukeshu Vigatas Pruhaha means what? When there are things favorable or not favorable, he has no comments. When there are comforts, he is not attached. This is how, this is the biggest mantra if you practice in your life. See, here, don't talk. But like you know, when you sometimes you get vomition, that time you can't and we vomit. See? 
I should not say, uh, but you know, our neighbor's daughter-in-law is far better than our daughter-in-law. Who asked you? We will come to discover this, my friends. 99% we talk when it is not necessary. And then the thought starts spinning. One thought breeds the next one, the third, the fourth thought. Observe this in day-to-day -day life. If there is a gathering of about 5-10 people, like I came here. Now, our um, people told me, Swamiji, this is done. And Swamiji can... Now, there was no need for me to tell him that I know Swamiji personally. I have gone to him. He knows me. There was no need. But then, the habit... See, friends, the day we recognize this principle, the net result will be, we will start remaining where we are, when we are, and what we are. Get one more example. When I give the example of husband and wife, if the husband and wife are together in the lecture, if the comment is in favor of wife and against the husband, immediately husband will look at me. I was not talking about you guys. I was talking husband and wife is a common noun. Any fool getting married to any fool is called as husband and wife, is it? It's not a proper noun. This is how we get involved when it is not required. Learn this principle, friends. So here, I am a speaker. I must speak with the reference to the subject. You are a Shrota. Shrota, you know? Shrota, the one who hears. Or Sota. R has gone. Or Sarota. Keep on cutting in between. Oh, that Mahatma said like this. This Mahatma said like this. Oh, you are gone. Only listen. How the satsang is heard in one of my book, Sadachar, it is a text of Bhagavan Shankaracharya, one of the best texts. I like it the most. There I have mentioned how satsang is heard. Satsang is heard like a monkey. Now what a monkey does, next time you watch monkeys in Vrindavan when you go, in Vrindavan, monkeys are the only one who move fearlessly. All human beings have got very strong bars around their house. They can't enter their house fearlessly. Monkeys will come. So, if you see and give them something to eat, so many will come. And they have to compete. So, whether it's a banana or anything, they keep on eating. And then they have got pouches in their mouth, in their throat. And everywhere they collect the whole thing, whatever is available, like a greedy person. And after it is over, satsang is over. They they go and sit on a tree all alone, where nobody disturbs them. They take out one chickpea and bite it. And then they swallow. Then they take out the second chickpea, they bite it and swallow. Exactly the satsanga. When we are listening to satsanga, only listen. Keep on collecting the various good thoughts, one after another. Learn, 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 learn. That is called a shravana. After that, be yourself when you are, then manana, take out that thought and reflect on it. How can it be practiced? So when we are studying Ramayana, what we have learned, first principle I told you, no second principle. You all know, Bhagwan Ram belonging to a royal family, up to the age of almost a teenage, 13 or so, he did not ask anything from his father. 
very obedient, very nice uh, son, respecting, doing all the traditional things, uh, do namaskar to the God, do the puja, chant the mantra, and uh, respect elders, uh, touch the feet of everybody. Everything regularly he was doing. One day he asked his uh, father, that, Dad, I haven't asked you anything. I want to go around the country and see the country. So the father was very happy. Please go. It is necessary if you want to um, widen the horizon of your wisdom and knowledge and experience, you must travel around the world. So he agreed. Bhagwan Rama went all around, came back, and when he came back, he was 15 years of age, a teenager. And uh, went to his uh, palace and then one day it so happened that the big assembly was going on. Bhagwan, uh, this Rama's father, Dasharajji, he was sitting on the throne. All the rishis, the munis and all the ministers were sitting there. And a servant comes and tells in the assembly, Sir, we don't know what happened to Rama. He has stopped taking food. He is looking very emaciated. He is not interested in anything. When the girls go, go to um, enliven him, he throws them out. He doesn't talk to anybody. He is not doing his prayers. He is not taking even bath. We don't know what happened to him. Now this is since he came back from his tour around the country. And that very time, like a Hindi movie, that very time, Vishwamitra ji comes. And after he comes, he is received by Dashrath ji with great respect and tells, Sir, what can I do for you? You order, it will be done. Vishwamitra ji tells, I want your son Rama and Lakshmana for protecting my yajnas. Dashrath ji immediately turns, No, 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 it's not possible. They are so young. They are so... Uh, delicate that if you press their teeth, the, the milk will come out. They are so, if you want, I will come and protect them, protect you. Please don't ask. Vashishtri says, this is not right. You have given a word. You cannot go back. Then they have to call. So they say to their servant, please call Rama. And Rama comes to the assembly, salutes his father, everybody sits on the floor. And then they say, what happened to you? And that is the first chapter of Yoga Vashishta. And after listening to the Yoga Vashishta, Rama metamorphosis comes out of the delusion of relative existence. See? And he starts living life from the absolute standpoint. Now let us understand this principle. We are looking at the waters, but we call them as waves. We jump into the waters. We call it as the ocean. From the water's point of view, there is neither ocean nor waves. If you go and talk to the water and tell, uh, excuse me water, uh, as ocean, you are terrible man. We sunk in that. And uh, as waves, yes, I like you very much. The water will say, excuse me gentlemen, what is the ocean? And what are waves? And for us who are live, living in a relative world, ocean is the cause, waves are the effect. From water's point of view, ocean is neither the cause nor the waves the effect. Where are we living today? We are living in cause and effect, cause and effect. See, Bhagavan Shankaracharya writes in Lakshina Murti Stotra, 
विश्वं पश्यति कार्यकारणतया स्वस्वामी संबंधतः शिष्याचार्यतया तथा पितृपुत्राध्यात्मना भेदत दिस वर्ल्ड इज क्रिएटेड वेन कॉज एंड इफेक्ट इज टेकन एज रियल विश्व पश्यति कार्यकारणतया लाइक डिसेपल एंड गुरु फादर एंड सन बॉस एंड सबॉर्डिनेट how simple it is but then we get lost in this so <coughs> after listening to the instruction from um vashishta ji bhagwan ram comes out of the delusion of relative existence he comes to discover his essential non dual absolute causeless effectless non specific existence real spiritual attainment is attainment of nirvishesha nirakar satta nirvishesha non extraordinary we are all carrying the burden of something extra on our head i am man i am woman i am young i am old i am indian i am not indian i am rich i am poor i am married i am unmarried how many specificities addition of every criteria breaks us into pieces and they have no existence be very attentive i as a man one i with reference to my father i have become a son the same i one with reference to my wife i have become husband the same i the one with reference to my son i have become a father have i become three every additional conditioning created somebody out of me who doesn't exist where is the father and the son in the same man can you see or separate the husband from the man this one principle if you catch you have got the gist of ramayana about this i'll tell you one event which happened in india this i have told many times is very solid thing if it can click by god's grace we are learned a lot there was one girl who came to meet me she said swami ji my mummy has asked me to meet you i said okay come you know about me i said i know you are divorced yes then she said there was some function in our house they are maharashtrians function some i don't know what function they have some ladies function and her mother told you cannot stay during this function because you are not saubhagyavati so you go out and come late at night you cannot be present for this function so i told my mother but that man is not dead although i am divorced is still alive don't argue you cannot say you go away ask your swami ji she came to me she asked me this question now what reply will you give her question was swami ji after divorce the girl is widow or not widow i said i have studied all the four vedas nowhere there is a mention that after divorce the girl becomes a widow or not widow because who died husband did not die why he doesn't exist 
wife doesn't die she doesn't exist the so what is the reality reality is man woman but who are miserable these non existing entities mother father brother sister husband wife they are all miserable observe this within you let us do one more experiment very simple experiment as you are sitting become let us play this game you become husband or wife close your eyes as a husband and wife you sit and see what thoughts come to your mind stop now become parents or children and see what thoughts come to your mind stop last experiment remain as nobody experiments over now we conduct analysis when you became husband or wife the thoughts are pertaining to wife or husband respectively when you became parents or children the thoughts are pertaining to children or parents respectively when you remain as nobody so who is living life waves are living the life not the water and what is the life of the waves they are born they grow they die water is not born never grows never dies now see when a child is born there is not only one birth there are three births which are the three births child is born mother is born father is born the child grows mother father never grow see in one place i was there that lady old lady was about 96 years of age her son was a retired brigadier now he has grandchildren this old lady will every time ask beta khana khaya re yaar no i have prepared this thing for you did you taste that you must eat that take something more i know you like it then mother never grows and who is miserable these non existing entities the day you discover this principle that whenever you are disturbed at the root of every disturbance there is somebody as a seed without the seed the plants cannot grow earth is there out of the earth the plants don't come out of the seed the plants come mind is there out of the mind the thoughts don't come but the seed of somebody so what should be the life be somebody without becoming anybody this is a riddle how it is possible 
It's very simple. It's not difficult. And exactly this is what Bhagwan Rama did in whole of Ramayana. <clears throat> in uh, Uttar Pradesh, for the first time in my life, I saw Rama Leela, Mathura probably, Mathura from down that area. And uh, I was small and very enchanted by seeing the Ram Leela. So when, uh, and those days there was no electricity etc. So the gas battis used to be there everywhere in an open area and there used to be a kind of a stage somewhere in the center and then some kind of curtains and everywhere darkness so you don't require anything. Then just put the tea and it's dark. So it was an uh, episode of uh, Hanumanji and Sitaji. So <clears throat> Hanumanji has gone to uh, Lanka and then he landed in that um, Ashokvatika and there Sitaji is sitting. Hanumanji looks at her, does Namaskar and a curtain falls so that the people will wait what happened next. And I was more interested in how they are doing it because <clears throat> Sitaji is also a man and Hanumanji is also a man. See, in also Ras Leela, Bhagwan Krishna's, there also Radhaji is always a boy, Radhaji is never a girl. And I asked one day in one Ras Leela, I said, hey, why this Radhaji is so serious? They told me, Swamiji, we don't know what happens. This boy who has become Radha is so giggling, laughing, enchanting, therefore we select him as a Radhaji. The moment he puts, puts on that Radha this attire, we don't know what happens. This is the experience of everybody. They immediately become Gambhir. We don't know what happens. So, <clears throat> this Hanumanji and Sitaji both were men. So, I as a child went from the back side of the stage to find out. Who is this Hanumanji? Because uh, his voice was like a man. Sitaji's voice, voice also was like a man. When I went, and that day I got the real message of Ramayana. Because inside that curtain there was light. Immediately Rama and Sita, this Harumanji and Sita came together. Harumanji took out his bidi and asked Sitaji, Sita, Majis card. Sita, Sita took out Majis. Dumrapanam, Shatagodanam, Ek Ek Kash Ganga Snanam. See? And they had their uh, so few pops here and there. And then again the bell went and 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 and. So they have to again go on the stage immediately. And again they in the same pose. And then Mate. I was thinking he will ask, Vidi <laughs> See friends, it was a Leela. Leela means what? Everything appears to be happening, but in fact nothing is happening. <laughs> this is Ramayana. Bhagwan Ram knew this at the age of 15. With this wisdom, he jumped into the life. In case of Arjuna, it was the other way around. When Arjuna was on the battlefield, he was toward the fag end of his life, not the beginning of his life. You all know when Mahabharata happened, that time, Bhagwan Sri Krishna was 89 years of age and Arjuna was 86 years of age. So, Arjuna got that wisdom, knowledge toward the fag end of his life. Therefore, if his life, you see, was a struggle, vengeance, anger, frustration. But the same wisdom, Bhagwan Ram got it right in the beginning when he was a teenager. And with that wisdom, he lived his whole life. And how he lived? See, 
he knew what is the purpose of his descent in this world. Avatara Karya. In Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan says, Yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutthanam dharmasya tadatmanam srujamyam paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha dushkrutam dharma samsthapana arthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Now this exactly was the purpose of Bhagavan Rama coming in this world. He knew it. And he lived up to that. We all have come here for satsang. What is the purpose of our coming here? To be present 100%. And although we may be doing anything, but this main purpose of our life should not be forgotten. We are in this world only for one purpose. And we become an instrument through which the Lord expresses. Like this mic. Mic has no purpose. It is kept in a box. No purpose. Then the one who is speaking through the mic, he has the purpose. And his voice should be reached to the audience. But how? Without alteration. If the mic starts his own sounds, sometimes it happens. Mike has his own electronic Omkar. Om. Or sometimes the mic cleans its own throat. Khar, 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 like that. What we do, such a mic, throw it away. Exactly the same way. We are the mic for the Lord. But instead of He expressing through us, we express through us. See, my friends. Therefore, what is spiritual practice? Uddhare dhatmanatmanam natmanam avasadayet atmaiva atmano bandhu atmaiva repuratmanaha We are here for our evolution. And what is evolution? We play the various roles that we are supposed to play but abide in the truth. like an actor on the stage. The whole story is revolving around him. And therefore the psychological atmosphere in the whole audience is developed. That he is unfortunate, he is being tortured for none of his fault, everything. And on the stage the things are going on. He is really tortured, he is beaten and the blood comes out and all kinds of things. And he is also crying. That time what happens in the mind of the actor? He says, you fools, you are paying through your nose and crying really. I am paid and I am crying fake with the glycerin eyes. It is just a drama, not the real. This is the only spiritual practice. We all have to play our roles perfectly well. But at the same time, never forget, this is the role we are playing. That is spirituality. So if you are in front of elders, play the role. Respect. Don't argue. Submit. And particularly with the old people, never argue. Any old person talking to you without listening, say yes. Because after two minutes, they'll forget. Yes, about what? Your problem is solved. See? If you go and argue, in, then they'll remember. Never argue. There is a secret I'm telling you of my life. <laughs> There's a reason I don't argue with anybody. Ah, without listening, forget about it. Then those who are your contemporary, be friendly with them. Those who are youngsters, be forgiving. You have to play the role. But there are some bad elements in the society. Be indifferent. You are not here to improve the world. But main thing you are not telling, 
what is that main thing? How to deal with the wife? You are asking a sannyasi. Okay, I'll tell you. When she speaks, you should not talk. When she talks, you should keep quiet. There will be peace always in life. Play the role. Don't get rolled up in the role. See, friends. This is exactly what Rama did. From Ramayana, remove the topic of Ravana taking Sitaji away. Let us edit Ramayana. According to Valmiki Ramayana, Bhagavan Ramachandraji ruled for 11,000 years. Out of 11,000 years, 14 years, he was sent to the forest. Out of 14 years, 13 years, he was in Chitrakut, enjoying life. No botheration of any kind. He made 13 years vacation. Then in the remaining one year, six months, he enjoyed the hospitality of the saints and sages in the forest. Remaining six months, Gabbar Singh came. Ravana came, took her and the purpose of Bhagavan Rama's arrival was Paritranaya Sadhuna that he did initially. Vinashaya Chadushkrutam to destroy Ravana. For that he has come. The major part of his life was for the welfare of the good people. But if there are not good people in this world, why will God descend? <coughs> See the sequence of thoughts. Bhagavan doesn't say that Vinashaya Dushkrutam Paritranaya Sadhunam. No. First he says Paritranaya Sadhunam, then Vinashaya Dushkrutam. And we say, oh, world is so bad, why God is not coming? God doesn't come here as a jaduwala. He is available in New Delhi. <coughs> See, Bhagavan comes in this world, Paritranaya Sadhuna. See, friends, when Tulsidaji was there, on that particular time, so many great saints, all devotees, that time Bhagavan came. <coughs> Therefore, when Bhagavan knew that this is the purpose of my life, then it should be done. So he, he did a technique. And this is told in Ramayana, but normally people bypass this. After 13 years of stay, when Bhagwan Ram, Sitaji and Lakshmanji moved, it was not even known to Lakshmanji. Bhagwan Ram told Sitaji, Kindly hide your form in the element fire. Bring out a Xerox copy and follow me. So in the front Bhagwan Ram, then Xerox copy and then Lakshmanji. And then Ravana comes to abduct. That is also a good plan. And when this Mariji shouts, Lakshmana save, Lakshmana save. So, Sitaji tells Lakshmana to go. He said, no, I cannot go. Nothing can happen to Rama. This is some fake Maya. So, that time Sitaji says, you are having bad intentions towards me, therefore you are not going. Original Sita will never say this. Fake Sita. Xerox copy. Then, they are the war was over. Now Sitaji has to come back. Again Bhagavan Ram says, Agni Pariksha. Meaning was, now return the Xerox copy, get the original one. And with the original copy, or original Sitaji, Bhagavan Ram went back to Ayodhya. But in between, see the Alapa, the misery is explained, uh, expressed by Bhagavan Rama. 
Oh trees, where are where is my Sita, my beloved? Without her I cannot live. Hey Sita, why you have gone? Where are you? Oh birds, hey Jatayu. Do you think Bhagavan Ram didn't know it? If you are a real devotee of Bhagavan Ram, you will never get lost in this world. Play your role perfectly like Bhagavan Ram played. See friends, then Rama will start expressing through us. An expression of Rama is only one. Happiness. No miseries. So, we don't have to get Rama's darshan. We have to allow him to express through us. He is suffocating inside. Let him express. And to allow him to express, the mantra I told you, Deko, Suno, Bolo Man. Listen, hear, don't talk. And when you feel that, oh, people will think I am dumb, it is better. Let the people think we are dumb because we don't talk. Rather than giving them confirmation by opening our mouth. <laughs> Rama expresses his happiness, not misery. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purnaat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Sri Guru Pyo Namaha Hari Om